for the Indian state, this is a seminal moment in the evolution of our statecraft and national security. That's the first point I would make. In what sense? You know, Op Sindur, I'll just take you back to the days of Parakram, the days of inaction, Parakram and 2611. I was a colonel and a brigadier. So look at the frustration after Parakram, 24 hours of mobilization and nothing, months of mobilization and nothing happened. 2611, we did precious. Uh, in one of the briefings, I was personally present where we gave a whole lot of things why we can't do this, we can't do that. So the Indian military was a blunt instrument, huge but unusable, non usable. This time, Sindhu shows us that we are an instrument of precision strike, non contact kinetics. I don't yeah. think we've lost a single soldier. Non contact kinetics. And this transition has only been enabled by technology. This is what technology can do. And if we get more of technology, we can do so much more. Op Sindur has allowed us to rediscover the utility of force because of technology. Why it become a blunt, blunt instrument? So this is why I say technology is driving geopolitics and national security like never, like never. Now the second point, we are also speaking when we have, when we... A ceasefire has been announced. Yeah. Now I know my friends and countrymen well. The moment the ceasefire was announced, we'll stop doing everything. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not fall into the trap because the next challenges are just along the way. And I will tell you how it is. This is a moment to resolve that we will seek combat overmatch with Pakistan. I mean, $4 trillion, $0.38 trillion. We need combat overmatch. And to shrink the relative combat ascendancy with China. Shrink it. In both, technology will play a huge role. I'm not making an argument for escalation of budgets merely. I'm saying technology as the level. So I'm saying technology as a tool of national security and geopolitics and technology as a level. Now, the military throughout needs to show some realism and humility. What is the realism and humility? There has been a marked change in the character of war, predominantly to unmanned systems. Yep. Look at Ukraine. And it was obvious, but we just don't, you know, concede this very easily. In Ukraine, 80% of Russian casualties in men and equipment have come from drones. Not from infantry, not from armor, not from artillery. I had to swallow humble pie and not from air power. Piloted air power. They have come from drones. It takes very wise militaries to concede and adjust to this reality. I'm not saying that the utility of others has gone, but I'm saying accept the reality, non-contact kinetics and unmanned systems. Precision. This time we took out, in precision, we took out some targets of the terror ecosystem. If our precision was even more refined, we would have taken out not uh, the family members of Masood Asar, but Masood Asar himself. That should be it. U.S. doesn't take out Suleimani's four wives. They take out Suleimani. U.S. takes out Al Zawari when he's having a cup of tea. Now, how does technology come in? General Panwar is here. He is the technology man. I'm not the technology man, but I'm telling you, now is a matter of detailing and clarity. Unless you have presence in the LEO space, you will never get precision. Hmm. ISRO will not give you presence in the LEO space. ISRO is exploration. So when we say India is a great space power, it is, but it is in docking, it is in astronauts. It is not in military capacities. In the same LEO space, China has 14,000 satellites. USA 42,000. We have none. So we were relatively blunt. Without Starlink's kind of systems, we should have one for Ladakh, one for the Eastern Theater. Without Starlings, you will not, in my un understanding, have positioning and communications. So you will not have real refined dronery. What you are, you haven't seen those sophisticated drone songs. You've seen one drone, yeah. I don't want to under, you know, uh, firstly, they are not ours. So we need to get ind indigenous about our drones. And secondly, that kind of sophistication will only come from this, these, this kind of stuff. 
so it is technology leading to direct combat outcomes the third point i would like to make is let's stop these technology debates and let's get into technology action yes so i'll tell you ai defense secretary pete hexit when he took over 3 months back he said what is our status in ai he was given a series of briefings and in frustration he said bhai i don't want theories where are we and this you're talking of the most advanced power it got a long story short the americans were nowhere you see the order he has signed it's on the net the order is two page it says ai enablement of eurocom and ipcom so no no theories this committee that committee yeah we should say ai enablement of northern theater eastern theater at least say it then he goes to say what will ai do there are some combat objectives precision strike shrinking of the uda loop so on and so forth. now he says means so he was told ki sir we can't give it like to this person we can't give it to that person this he said whatever the objections ota exception given consequence a concrete plan ai agents and duril wo sab nikal diya l1 pel1 aur jitne complications hum laga dete hain large language models microsoft 16 months delivery four review meetings before that why can't we do that we are not even military is not even talking of gpus first llm order is given where is the military's llm hum bolo to bhai so let action on technologies things will go wrong we will fall short but let's not get into the oh, oh. sir we cannot give order to a good startup sarvam whoever it is so drdo that must not be the argument there are no rules to do this knowing fully well that drdo will take a 10 month project and do nothing or 10 year project and do nothing i am not demeaning drdo you first produce the capacities and they'll give you the order and look how this whole thing spirals you will take ai give it to drdo they will not deliver and then you will say technologies don't matter technologies matter but let them work so i'm talking of action there are three technologies we must just focus on in my view ai ew space it may be too early to talk we had great challenges in ew in sindhu great challenges and the reason was that the entire electromagnetic spectrum baidu shaidu was handed on a platter to the pakistanis the chinese were operating it hmm. and now when those things will come you will come to know what were the challenges so eu ew is no longer theory it is affecting your combat capacities ai is no theory it is affecting your combat capacities 